And then, uh, so then I've probably gone to talk about dislocation. Okay. Um, so, so dislocation is when the basically the ball and the socket, so the artificial ball and socket, the ball pops out of the socket. Um, so it's not designed to do that. It's designed to stay in place, obviously. But if the patient, you know, uh, fell awkwardly or twisted, then there is the potential that that might happen. Now, again, the risk is about one percent, um, maybe even a bit less than that. Um, and, and oftentimes, it's related to the position that the implant's been put in. So, you know, down to where they were positioned at the time of surgery um, and, and that in combination with the way the patient moves. And, and sometimes it's a, a truly traumatic event. You know, someone falls down the stairs or something like that and they get their leg caught, you know, yeah. then obviously they can injure any joint. But, yeah. uh, um, uh, but sometimes it can be something quite innocuous, like just reaching down to sort of uh, tie your shoelaces or something like that. Um, but but most situations if it dislocates you know that's quite a a sudden event obviously it's painful um you know you can't walk um so people would end up in uh, you know in a and e essentially um and then we'd have to have a, an anesthetic to, to put the hip back in so generally with a, a manipulation not opening up the hip but with a manipulation you can most times get the hip back in so, so, then, so, so no, no, no surgery, just kind of position. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So an anaesthetic, but but no kind of open surgery. And and the vast majority of times, you know, that that wouldn't go on to then be a, you know, a recurrent problem, mm -hmm. and the patient would recover, go home, and then you know get on with things. Mm -hmm. um, but in some cases, it, it may go on to be a recurrent problem, and the hip then keeps dislocating. Um, and then it might be that you some more surgery needs to be done on the, the hip either to readjust you know the position of implants or to change implants out for some other design that might be more stable um so you so yeah so dislocation again can lead to revision in some situations and, and i guess here we're we're uh, touching on a subject that, that i know uh can, can cause some confusion particularly as by and large i guess Many many hospitals and many surgeons seem to be moving away from using what's called hip precautions, mm -hmm. but they're still in place in, so, in in some cases. And I guess that's the originally I think one of the main things they were there for. I guess is to, is to limit the risk of, of of dislocation. Yeah, so I mean, that's an interesting topic you you touched on there, and it's a bit of a minefield if you if you yeah. think about it actually. Um, so so yeah, hip precautions are these things that that people are often instructed to do after surgery and the, the common things are to sleep on your back you're not to lie on your side not to cross your legs and then not to bend the hip more than 90 degrees um to kind of like bending down to touch your toes and, and, and things like that and and that might be anywhere from maybe six weeks or even 12 weeks in maybe more extreme examples you know and that and that actually it's it's a historical uh, thing so uh, at right to where i work that's where john charley started doing hip replacement and you know initially they had patients in bed for you know a week after surgery you know even in plaster with you know a stick between the legs um, and then gradually 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 got more kind of accelerated rehab um but the hip precautions kind of stayed um, and we actually are in the process of, of doing a randomized trial about hip precautions versus no hip precautions and does that actually you know reduce the risk of dislocation does it affect um you know the the, the functional outcome of patients um, because many patients find it really hard to sleep on their back um and, and avoid doing those things it's very very difficult um so the, the bottom line is there there's very very little evidence that hip precautions actually do anything um but but yet everybody's very reluctant to to with well Many yeah, people are very reluctant to withdraw because you know the consequence of this case is, is significant. You know, it's really painful for the patient. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everyone wants to avoid that. So yeah. to withdraw something can be very difficult. But you're absolutely right that the trend is away from that. Yeah. Having said that, though, I'll flag for anyone watching this video who has been given hip precautions, always follow the plan from your surgeon and your team. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so obviously a lot of the post-operative instructions that patients are given are very patient specific. So yeah. it, it might be that there's a specific reason why you've been told to do these particular things. So yeah, so what we're talking about is a very generic general sort of discussion rather than any specific advice to any one individual. Yeah.